Hello there. So in this video, we'll take a look at how to create a code space so that you can follow along all the tutorials and examples uh, in your browser using uh, GitHub's code space. So first off, open up the browser window and head to github.com slash in pajama slash c hyphen ninja hyphen listings. This URL is also available in the video description. So you can just click and get to the page. Now you will need to fork this repository. Uh, so the fork button is right here. And once you have forked, it will create a copy for yourself. And once you have that copy, what you'll need to do is uh, from your version of the repository on the on your GitHub profile, you will need to press this button code. And then there is this one button uh, that is like a plus sign. So just create, click on that and what will happen is it will open up a new tab and it will start to create a container. Okay, so it has found an image it says and it will go ahead and now build that container. So I'll kind of talk about uh, the details of this in a while. But if you see it's kind of going ahead and installing certain uh, packages and utilities that will be required uh, for our experiments. Now what we can do is while this kind of continues and creates uh, you know the code space what we will do is we will uh, take a look at why we are doing this and what is going on so let me just get my uh, ipad here right so, right so let me go ahead and explain what is happening here so we had this repository right called the c ninja listings and it had like certain files so what we then did was we clicked on the code button and then uh, the plus icon and created a code space so the idea of code space is that it is going to create uh, a container a docker container online and the docker container essentially is a virtual machine um, which will have ubuntu as an operating system installed on it and not only will it have ubuntu as the operating system but it will also have the compiler and other utilities installed already and why is this important so the idea is that if you were to set up an environment on your own locally um, let's say in your operating system then you might run into installation issues setup issues and all of that so creating a container uh, kind of takes care of all of that for us uh, you will not run into any issues while setting up this environment it's just taken care of now in terms of compiler and utilities uh, what all do we install so that we can take a look at uh, our by going to our repository and then within dev container and then the docker file here so all of these utilities uh, and programs are getting installed uh, and one of the important programs that it installs is called uh, QEMU and this is kind of the workhorse for our development or learning uh, uh, the lower level embedded development so let's talk about QEMU and let me also have this on the side here just so that this is going to take a while it takes about like five minutes or so uh, okay in the meantime then let's talk about uh, QEMU so QEMU is quick emulator uh, it is a software and this software has the capability of uh, kind of uh, in software so in software it implements um, uh, boards right boards like raspberry pi um, texas instruments ti stm microelectronics stm boards and so on and so so forth so the idea is that it implements a board which is completely software, meaning that it changes states uh, as if it is a physical board. 
right and we'll talk about the changes state also so the idea is that this board then also has a cpu on it and what we are wanting to do is write some code in let's say assembly or c and then compile it into a binary that can be run on this cpu right or rather the binary will be consumed by that cpu and it will run within the qemu environment now the interesting bit is uh, qemu allows us to connect ex external debuggers with it so in this case gdb which i'll demonstrate in a while uh, but the idea is once you can connect a, a debugger like jdb to this board which is again completely in software so the idea is we'll be able to explore and learn the cpu and that's kind of stage one or you know the first steps of learning embedded systems development you go down and understand uh, one cpu very thoroughly how to program it and then uh, once you understand how to program it later on um, in this video series what we'll do is we'll we'll go to the real hardware and as we'll see, even with the real hardware, we'll be able to do all the compilation on the code space uh, locally in the uh, GitHub provided environment, and then download that binary and flash it onto the hardware. So that is how it will work later on uh, in this video series. Um, okay, so that's about it. So this is like the perfect environment wherein we would not depend on any external hardware or any laptop, any specification, none of that. As long as you have a browser and you have access to GitHub and you can clone this repository or fork this repository, I think we are good to go. You'll be able to follow along all the examples. So now what I'll do is I'll switch back to this window and let's just wait for it to uh, just complete the setup. Yeah, so it's almost finishing up the creation of the code space, the container and Right. Once it has generated or created the container, uh, you'll notice that the web page kind of converts into a VS Code uh, environment. And now let me introduce you to different parts of what you see on the screen. So what we have is it has kind of opened up the readme file for us. Uh, if you see all these files on the side here are same as what we have here in our original repository. So all the files are reflected there. Now what we'll do is quickly go ahead and kind of uh, make sure that our environment is set up correctly. So let me go ahead and close this. We will require two terminals to run this uh, test. Uh, so press the plus button here. It will generate another or it will create another terminal. Uh, grab it and move it to the editor uh, window now okay what i'll also do is go ahead and full screen just so we have like more real estate screen real estate for ourselves then let's head to this test uh, directory where we have this main dot s file which is just one line of assembly instruction and what we see here is it's adding uh, contents of x0 with one and putting it into the x1 register so that's that becomes important in a while so let me kind of make some room here nice so in the bottom terminal let's go to the test directory and in the top terminal also let's go to the test directory so the first command we want to issue is the make command what that will do is convert this assembly instruction into the binary format that our uh, qmu or the processor running on qmu can understand so what you see here is it has executed this RISC-V compiler uh, on the main.s file and generated the main.elf here. Now it goes ahead and kind of massages that ELF to print out the binary content or well, the, the instruction as it would look in the memory. So this special number is this instruction. Uh, we don't care about it as much right now so the next command we will issue is make debug and what it does is it launches the qmu uh, let's close this we would not need this um, so it launches the qmu application and loads the main.elf and then what it does is it stops there 
and exposes or opens up a port for GDP. So in this top terminal here now, what we'll do is type make GDP. Once we do that and hit return, uh, you'll notice that GDP has connected with QMU. Uh, the QMU, the processor is kind of halted at the first line itself, uh, which is also you know, suggested here um, and which is also mentioned here. Now, if you notice, these are like the CPU uh, registers and their names are a little different than what we have here. So these are called the ABI names. These are called the non-ABI names. The details are in other videos in this playlist. Uh, so what we now want to do is it is held here. Just go ahead and type NI uh, at the prompt and hit return. Once you hit return, notice that the contents of RA change to one and RA represents uh, the register X1. Now, if this is done, uh, what I next want to uh, show you quickly is how how you exit the QMU and GDB. To exit GDB, just type Q at the prompt and hit return. Then type a Y and GDB exits. Uh, come down to the bottom terminal, hit Control A followed by an X and QMU will exit. Okay, so now if all of this you were able to follow and worked exactly the same way for you as well then your environment is set up correctly. Now what you can do is you can simply close this tab and you know the container would disappear, but it would be still running for another 30 minutes. And I have to mention at this point, so code space, uh, the free version kind of in a month, 120 hours of free usage is allowed. And as you saw, we did not give in any um, details about the payment and we wouldn't want to we don't have to uh, so 120 hours is good enough for us so when you return back to your repository go under code spaces you will see some name here these are like random names but this was um, the container that was created for us and it says that it is active so what you can do is you can stop your code space after your work is done and once it is stop let's say later on you want to work on it again so come to code here then go to whatever name uh, for your uh, code space is go to the triple dots here then say open in open in browser and what it will do is it will kind of restart the same code space and you will be back to the point uh, from where you had left off so if you were able to uh, do all of this and it worked out uh, correctly for you then do let us know in the comment section and also if there are any issues uh, feel free to go ahead to the github repository for um, um, git repository for the cninja listing and create an issue for us so that we can have discussions there all right with this uh, welcome to the lower level embedded systems programming and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye